That is the problem. Yeah, I kind of wish I didn't get that text. I am wondering if it is lice after all this. You lost your tag! And then you just squirt the back. See how it just, you can tell it's just been pulled. Sheep are sheep, and when you don't want them to do something, they 100% will. Good morning, you guys. It is cold outside. Negative 1.7 Celsius. Today's actually a busy one. We are doing a few things that I wanted to share with you guys. First of all, just chores, which I'm actually really appreciating chores. I love doing chores, which you guys all know. Um, and it's given me a chance to really uh, observe these ewes and their lambs. Later today, I'm just not comfortable selling my ewe lambs to other people, partly because I just, I'm not confident they're good enough. I really don't track genetics that well, uh, but this particular farmer I know really, really well. Anyways, he texted me the other day and he said, would you consider selling me the ones you don't keep? The ones that I've earmarked for market, so anything sired by the Ile de France or the Suffolk, I don't typically keep those back. Uh, for market lambs, I always keep my I keep my steel use and my Rito use back, and he knows this because he knows my system quite well. Anyway, I said let me go through the weights, which I did yesterday, and there's quite a few, so I'll go through that with you guys a little later after chores this morning, and then this afternoon we are going to treat my use for lice. I do this after shearing, but I never do the second dose, and to really combat it, you have to do it twice two weeks apart from each other. So I'm hoping to get on top of of whatever's happening, why ever they're losing their wool, which uh, the more I see them kind of scratching up against the bunk and stuff like that, I am wondering if it is lice after all this. Should we take you back to the house, little one? So chores are finished, and the one thing I've been meaning to for the last couple days um, is adjust my belt. And what's happened is I believe I have bird nesting material down underneath it. So uh, this, is a, this is the tightener here. I'm just going to loosen off the pressure, get that belt real loose so I can stick my arm in underneath. Um, it's not a fun job. I, I really don't like this job. Anyway, I'm going to get to moving on this. I don't really remember how I do this. This needs to go back. Oh, I know what I have to do. I have to loosen those up. Right. Forgot to loosen those off first before anything actually comes loose. So now, we should be cooking with gas. I find the looser I make this belt, the way easier it is to get my arm in here, because it's kind of a brute. Okay, I'll take the other side off. Okay, so I've got it right, I've got the tension right off now. This has moved as far forward as it can. So I should, yep, I should easily be able to, s to get all that crud out of there, but that is, that is the problem. So what's happened is it's rolled around the roller like a million times. So it's not going to be fun to get out. So see how it's rolled around that roller? I have to basically carve it out of there, probably use my knife and my fingers, and pull. 
so I'll get back to you guys when I get this done. An hour later, we have it all cleared out. It was not fun, but that rod roller underneath is now freed up of stuff. So, I think I will clean up all this mess and tighten everything up. Let's see how much was plugged in there. Whew. Okay. Okay, I've got everything I I think adjusted to where it needs to be. It kind of went by the old mark here. I could maybe tighten this a little bit more. Um, but kind of what I go by is tension on the belt. So, as you can see, this got sucked right back up, which is good. I could maybe take a little bit off on this side still, but that side looks pretty tight. Or there was a bevel in the middle and it's gone. While I was here, I better grease it. it has been greased in, <laughs> I don't even know the last, oh, the last time. What? Battery's gone, oh, crying out loud. I didn't put a battery in it. Okay, let's try this with some power. Too, too bad. So she's all greased up there. Do the other side. I don't even know the last time that this thing's been done, so I'm just gonna go around and find grease fittings just to make sure this is all good. I need a pail. Job done. My window is southern facing and I'm dying of heat, but I'm not going to be here long and I don't want to take off all my gear and put it all back on, so bear with me. Oh, this camera. I'm not showing the computer screen because I've been trying and it's between the light and how slow this is, it's it's a little bit ridiculous. Okay, so what I'm looking for is anything sired, Ile de France and Suffolk for you lambs that um, that I have. My friend is interested in buying. I do not sell ewe lambs typically, but because I trust him and we have a very good relationship that I know goes both ways, he's not gonna come back at me and say, you said these ewe lambs were amazing, because um, I never claim that actually, that I have no problem selling them to him. The problem is though, I have not vaccinated anything because these were destined for market. So he will, if he purchases them this week, they're already, most of them are, majority of them are 16 weeks old or more. So he needs to get on vaccinating them. Okay, so I've got all my ewe lambs on here. There's 39 total. Between the Suffolk, I have, uh, the Suffolk and the Ile de France, I have 28, I can sell him. Weights look like they're anywhere between, so anywhere from 77 and a half to 103. So 77 and a half to 103, so his average weight will be decent. So I have no problem selling these to him. The problem is I told him I had a pretty heart to heart text with him. And I said, I have a real issue selling you lambs to fellow producers when the prices are so good at the market. Um, I'm getting I'm getting 300 plus for these 100 pound lambs. Uh, I don't know for how long, um, likely not much longer. But how can I charge him less than that when I, like, I, I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't feel like they're $300 ewe lambs. Um, 
I would say really good quality stock would be that. And so I really have a problem when the market's high to charge people what they're worth. And yet I, I, these guys were destined for the market to make that much. So I, I find this really hard and especially dealing with friends, right? You never want to charge, you never want to charge your friends what, what your animals are worth or what you can, what, like what their potential is. So I don't know. I will throw it out to them, him. I'll tell him what I have and, uh, and I, and what I do with him, what I've always done is say whatever the market price is, that's what I'll ask you for just average price. Cause that's what I typically always get. So we'll see if he wants to. I, I, I don't like it when people buy into this industry when the prices are so high because I did that and then the and then the market dropped out of the bottom like the very next year and we almost lost our shirt. Thank God we didn't buy many, but uh, God, it's, it, it digs you such a hole that you have to get out of. So yeah, I kind of wish I didn't get that text. So I have this all done. I'm gonna grab my Gallagher and take it out to the barn and we're gonna vaccinate my ewes that were sheared two weeks ago. Uh, it's six weeks already until they're gonna start lambing. So I will treat them with their clostridial vaccine. So if you remember, my mature ewes get Tazvax. It's just the old program that they've always been on. But any ewe that was born 2019 and over will get the Glanvac vaccination. So that's why my Gallagher is very, very important. So I can scan her tag, see when she's born and only give basically anything 2018 and, and older will get the Tazvac, 2019 and younger will get the uh, Glamvac. So I need my Gallagher to track all that stuff. If I didn't have this, it's hard to make any changes, right? Uh, even to change for the better or to, to try something new without data. So um, definitely this is my, besides Carissa, this is my right hand woman, my Gallagher. While we're at it, we're gonna treat for lice. The good thing about my new system is they get sheared at eight weeks and two weeks later is the perfect time for that vaccination. Uh, but it also is two weeks after I've given them a lice treatment and that, that lice treatment needs to be done like right at shearing and then two weeks later to break that cycle because I think the larva or whatever starts to, they lay their eggs in that time. So you gotta catch them again before they hatch maybe or maybe they just hatched anyways it's very important to do it two weeks and not a day before is what I've been told so we're going to stay with that protocol I have been guilty of not doing that second dosage because usually with my old system they were already gone and moved to the other side of the barn never to be kind of seen again until they start lambing um, this is just an additional management thing that I've added to stay on top of lice if that indeed is what I'm dealing with with this wool drop Okay, what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take off my hoof trimmer and put my sorting gate back on, and then we're good to go. We'll get everything all set up, rearrange some pens, and bring the ladies up for their vaccine. make a little pen here for these guys to just jump over for the afternoon and then the pen I want is just behind them so I'll move them up when they're done I'll put them back in and put these girls and boys back where they belong <laughs> Okay, we're all loaded up here. I will show you what I'm using for my lice treatment. Definitely talk to your vet because not every vet suggests the same st same thing. You have to make sure you have the right dosage as well. So here's my, and it's just lice X liquid. All I'm doing here is I'll just do a squirt down their back. I'm gonna do it after I vaccinate though because this stuff's pretty greasy. So I'll, I'll come through with my Tazvax or my Glamvac. 
I'll get that all set up and I'll show you guys what I do for that. Okay, everything's warmed up. I have my Glanvac. And Glanvac, if you remember, is only one mil. And the Tazvac booster is two mil. Now these are, for these guys, it's for clostridial protection to go through the ewe and into their milk so the babies are immunized for those first really critical uh, few weeks. So uh, that should give them enough protection. My vet likes to get it into them four to six weeks before they give birth. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Um, I will take out my camera and do more of a close up on how I changed my session on my Gallagher and just how I'm gonna keep track. Okay, we're gonna create a new session. And this is group three. So I'm going to put group three vaccinate. And it's got the date, February 3rd, okay. And then as I scan them, what I'm looking for, I'll just, I'll scan one quick here. So I'm gonna turn on the, turn on the Bluetooth. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my gun, cause they're hooked up. I'm gonna scan the ear tag, like so. And what I'm going to see here is this U was born in 2019, so it will get gland back. I will give it a dose of gland back, sub Q, uh, and then I'm going to put activities. Gland back. And then that is in under its all its information. Okay, so what I'm probably going to do first is go through with my scanner and mark which ones get glam vac uh, with just a different color paint maybe and that maybe orange i'll do orange for glam vac and then i'll do, i'll just put it on the dot they've already got on it and then it that'll just speed up the process because i can just see with my eyes so then i don't have to look at this look at this switch guns i can just go through do the glam vac ones go through do the taz vac ones and then we're done um, and then go through at the end and do the lights treatment Twenty eighteen is the white man's return, so I know this is not the right one. I'm gonna bring this because Okay, so I'm gonna go through first and do all the glam back and then I'll come back and do the Taz backs. There's more glam back in this group than Taz back, so it's all good. The so now I'm going to show you how I do the lice treatment. So let's get up a little closer here. So it does come with an applicator and it's got its own measurement here. And I hate this thing. I hate this dispenser, to be honest. I think it's not frozen. Because there's a little hole for air. And then you just squirt the back. Okay, we just finished this group. This is the last little, last group of seven just in here and I just completed them. I wanted to show you what it looks like when this wool gets picked off, whether they're scratching it off or what I have seen is other ewes actually picking it off each other. And Belinda was actually talking to her vet and she said it is very common for sheep to groom each other. And they said, especially if they're itchy, like if they are bugged by something. So that's when finally I was like, 
Thank you. No one has told me that. People tell me it's maybe nutrition. It's maybe, um, and that's kind of why I got that feed tested. Uh, some people tell me they're just bored and they need like to eat straw or hay or something extra. They're just looking for something. People have told me mineral. People have told me salt. Like, so it's the first time that someone said, uh, based on sheep behavior, that they actually groom each other. So if you guys have heard that before, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Like, is that why they're chewing each other's wool or are they deficient in something? Regardless, I'm treating them for lice the proper way. It's probably the first time I have actually done the second dose. Hopefully this is the turning of the tide and me doing it properly from now on. And hopefully I'll see a decrease in this wool pulling or picking or chewing or whatever it is. But I'll show you kind of the damage it does. See how it just, you can tell that it's just been pulled. Because if it was scratched, it'd kind of all be bare. I don't really have one in here. There are a few that, like Ruby was kind of all bare on her top. So, the, so she had a patch missing like that. And that makes sense because she's always scratching herself. So this, you can see, like it just looks like chew marks. So it's an, another sheep literally pulling the wool off her back. So I'm hoping it, I mean, I'm not hoping it's lice, but I'm hoping this will help. I know one question you are all gonna have is, can humans get lice from sheep? It's a totally different kind of lice uh, so everyone has told me that is smarter than me. So no, we can't get the lice that the sheep have. Thank God, I do not need anything else happening with this. thought while I was bedding, I would talk to you guys a little bit about that group that we just treated today. So that is the last real big management thing I have to do with that group before they have their babies scheduled for March break. A few of you have a very good memory and you remembered that with this group I had some rams break out about two weeks or a week before I wanted to breed them but potentially uh, we could have lambs as early as the last week of February. I'm not ready for that and our weather is not looking conducive for lambs that's why i always try to plan it like march break i learned the hard way two years ago that the end of february can be either very nice or it can be very 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 not nice and way too cold in this barn so fingers crossed they will not start lambing till march break but sheep are sheep and when you don't want them to do something they a hundred percent will You have a see-through tractor. It's uh, the new, uh, we're gonna put batteries in. <laughs> so we're gonna put some uh, Ds nice in each of the piston tractor. rings and uh, it should be good for about 30 seconds. Talk to Elon, he'll get you suited up. Side. Side. 